Dinner in Hell Band! Pound it home! Oh, would you listen to them, ladies and gentlemen of the audience? Oh, yeah. Out there just looking bright and shiny as ever. Sitting here, it's like sitting in the side of the parade when the freaking sweet marching band comes by and just feel it in your chest. Welcome back for another exciting edition of the Dinner in Hell podcast, the show where two amateur historians talk about the atrocious underbelly of history. I am one of your co-hosts, Brad the Impaler, and with me, as always... Ron Maiden. Yeah. You feel it? Do you feel it? I do. I am feeling it. I'm feeling this. It's electric. Podcast energy of excitement. Yeah. This is going to be... I'm excited for this one. It's another hometown tale. Holy shit. I think to this point, if you don't count Pontiac... Well, if I mean, you can count Pontiac, but the Mackinac... Mm-hmm. We did a story about a Mackinac massacre. You look it up. And that was the closest to where we brought, we record, which is the Detroit area, correct? Mm-hmm. Southeast Michigan, United States. Yeah, and we've had a couple of people uh, that are alums from yeah. the local university. Yes. We've touched on those a little bit recently. We've had oh. Ted Kaczynski. Yes, former math teacher, I believe, right? Or student at U of M student he got his postgraduate degrees there henry holmes he got his medical degree there who was a just a hell of a pharmacist Mm -hmm. house that henry built um but somebody was interacting with us on twitter named steve Mm -hmm. i ain't gonna say that i'm not gonna go in out and say that this is a episode as a request i'm gonna call this one more as a mention this is a social media mention but we were talking on there and this dude was like, I was like, oh, Mackinac's our first Michigan story. I think he's from Michigan, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, oh, you got to do the Ypsilanti Ripper. Yes. So we look it up. We research it. I, I had a sort of vague awareness that at some point there was a serial killer in the Ipsy. If you're from around here, they'll call it Ipsy for short. But it's Ypsilanti. It starts yeah. with a Y. Oh, the, the Ipsy Ripper. Yeah, right. the Ipsy Ripper. But... It turns out it's um, he's more known as the co-ed killer. Yeah, the right? series of murders is known as the Michigan murders. But isn't um, Kemper the co-ed killer? Didn't he kill nine like sorority girls? Ah, there's a lot of that shit. So I, there's there's be, been like a couple night stalkers. So let's call this one the Northeast co-ed killer of the United States because <laughs> we've got multiple you guys. We got so many co-ed killers. We're co-ed killer strong. Yeah, we could. You could. Let's just. We, we could just call him the Ypsilanti Ripper from this point on. What would you rather have? All of our co-ed killers to claim, <laughs> or one fucking Picton from Canada and be Ooh. a ca- Canadian claim? Uh. There's got to be more killers in Canada. Yeah, there's, there's more. <laughs> yeah, there's more. <laughs> we're at, we're gonna we're coming for you, Canada. Yeah, the, the episode 175. Some more Canadian killers. A oh, man killed a hundred pine trees i don't know <laughs> what do they do in canada they get chased by moose moose and M- meese are really cute but they're fucking dangerous as shit what would you the, do i didn't realize maybe until i was an adult exactly how fucking huge meese are <laughs> Mo- me moose and Me- <laughs> fuck are you talking about moose moose meese yeah, moose. I think you're right. Like geese. Is it just moose? Like, th- is there there's there's a moose, and then be like, there's two mooses. Is that sound? Oh, I probably. think it's three moose, three head of moose. I got about three head of moose on my property. I like moose. Uh, a. But um, let <laughs> anyway. me ask you this. Let me ask you this. You're <laughs> where, in the woods. What are we talking about? Being in the woods. We're talking about being in the Canadian woods, North yeah. America. Yes. And uh, there's a bear. Uh, ready to attack you he's aggressive what do you do how do you handle this i'm going to tell you something depends on the color bear there it just it's after you to kill you it's got cubs and it's bigger it's bigger than you 
Okay. So it's a grizzly whether bear. Whether it's Kodiak, whether it's polar, whether it's There's koala. There's a very big difference it's between than you. grizzly bear and black bear in this scenario. If this is a koala, six foot koala bear hightailing it towards you and you're in the Canadian North Northern <laughs> country. I would now listen, you have trees, you have trees, you have water, <laughs> you have a cliff. <laughs> what do you do? I stand near the cliff and then right when the bear is going to pounce on Olé! me, I duck it. <laughs> Like a bullfighter, take Correct. off your shirt. Yeah, I, I slip it, and the bear tumbles off, at which point it dies, and I can help myself to its meat. I say bring it in the water, bitch. Let's do this. I'll eat its heart to claim its power. You could climb the tree and just like uh, kick down at its face like all night long, like get out of here, fucking bear. I think a bear would just scramble right up the tree, grab oh you, and God. eat you. <laughs> yeah. About black bears, you just have to yell at and they'll fucking run away. Black bears are scared of like tiny dogs and shit. So the co-ed killer was <laughs> mentioned. Oh, yeah, that's what we were talking about. The co-ed killer. He was mentioned by a feller named Steve. Steve, if you're still a listener of the show, <laughs> if you only listened one time, <laughs> who knows? But uh, thanks for the mention. We did, This one was not on our radar and it was brought to our attention. You want to rhyme with that? It's his what? <laughs> attention <laughs> mention. Get it? I had it going. Uh, yeah, I will. I would come up with a rhyme for that, but I don't have time. I'll have to send my henchman. Just Saturday, I was at the um, comic convention. <sighs> this is hard. It reminds me of grade school when I was in detention. Oh, could you imagine if you're hooked on crack and you showed up and there was an intervention? Hold on. I have to piss. I'm experiencing some water retention. Holy shit. Good thing there's a thing you uh, call a toilet. It's one of the greatest inventions. Yeah. Um, I raise rabbits for food. They're out back. I've got them pent in. Oh, my God. Sometimes... Uh, you got to use a condom for uh, prevention. Piss me off. I'll go outside, get a hammer, fuck around, take your car and put a dent in. Damn. So the co-ed killer. <laughs> was Lanny his? Ripper. Let's get to it. This fool was born John Norman Chapman in Centerline, Michigan, June 17th, 1947. And... Why don't I know that name? Why didn't you know it before we looked into it? Uh, it was probably because we were really little. Yeah, but I wasn't even born yet, and I still know about John Wayne Gacy yeah. and Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah. and Theodore Bundy. That name should be like in all the Michigan pamphlets for schools. Yeah, let me start off this episode about John Norman Chapman, or John Norman Collins, as he would be known at the time of his oeuvre. Let me just please just do it. I seen I've I have looked through the notes mm -hmm. for this program, and this is going to be one of the wildest freaking uh, shows. Yeah, this is uh, fucked as up. far as details. There's going to be mentions of females being killed. Buckle up if you're female. Yeah, this is ugly. I don't know why the fuck this guy isn't isn't down there with the worst of them, but. I, let's just say this after we get through this i think you're probably gonna agree out there this guy sucked yeah oh yeah so shortly after he's born his father abandoned the family no yeah you don't say <laughs> mm -hmm. uh john's mother would remarry almost immediately but this new guy was incredibly abusive towards uh, John's mother, him, and his two siblings. So, I mean, this seems like a pretty common tale. Uh, the original, the father dips, and then in come a succession of abusive alcoholics. Yeah, that leaves the woman to raise the children on her own, and all she is really hoping for is a man that will have a relationship with a woman with kids already and support them because she, yeah. she can fucking work you got right. three kids to take care of one's a baby so you gotta take what you can get and she's getting all the shit oh yep yep and uh, a lot of people suffer from it and her and all the children and all the victims of this gypsy ripper 
Yeah, I think there's some of this is responsible. Uh, for, oh, for that. you you want to go Ipsy Ripper or Yipsy? I say it's I would, definitely Ip- Ipsilani. It is Ipsilani. Yeah, it Ipsy starts Ripper. with a Y if you're gonna try to Google this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's go Ipsy. Ipsy Ripper. Ipsy Ripper. I mean, a couple of examples of the stepfathering that John received during this period is uh, once when when John was two or three years old, his father, his stepfather used him as a human shield when another man drew a gun on him. <laughs> Take your best shot, you son of a bitch. Yeah. He's That's like crouched toddler. down prone. With yeah, like just- holding up a toddler in front of his face. And he's he's like I just wanted to he's like facing the kid he's got his back to the shooter he's like I'm just holding you for a second because I just want to say I'm really proud of you yeah, I've, I've had it's, it's been really you're just that's getting so big yeah if you want to kill wish me you were bigger you're also gonna have to take the take the rap for shooting a toddler yeah um the other thing he did is his stepfather once grabbed John. Uh, same age, two or three years old, and literally used him as a weapon to beat his mother with. I'm going to beat you to death with your fucking son. Is that what, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. That's a dad-on Michigan accent, by the way. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. That's Washtenaw talk. <laughs> Washtenaw County accent. Let's go have a pop. Let's go to the store and buy a couple pops. What kind of pop you want? Coke? Mountain Dew? definitely coke like, that's what we call it up here pop yeah it's pop but you know what soda is pop so you'd never guess it seems like a strong family but this would this marriage would not last no yeah they split up i mean it sounds like everything was going so well wouldn't you say yeah working out their kinks so now John's four years old. He was working out the kinks in John's back as he was swinging him fucking around like a yeah. rag doll. Oh, man. I can't, I can't believe you laughed at that. That's got to be what <laughs> do you visual. Think? It's like a grab by the ankle and then hit him with the head and arms of the kid or uh, grab him by the head, man, and just swing him around like a swivel freaking. I'm just kidding. I don't think that. Uh, yeah, I think it's the where the head is the weapon part of you it. You grab two ankles and yeah whip that toddler yeah now yeah if i could paint the picture just right how old was he is when he was a weapon as a weapon three now he he, he uh, early in his life his his body was known as a weapon 45 pounds as an adult fucking. as an adult man he uses his hands as weapons full circle yeah yeah i can see the logic in that he's always been a weapon in some way. Yeah, you, you, if somebody uh, especially has a predilection towards violence, like it's clear young John did, you especially don't want that person's entire life to just be steeped in like a boiling pile of violent shit that seems to bring out the worst in people. Pretty much all of our shows that are about a single person that has killed uh has had the same single mother or shit mother abusive they've all had the same yeah i mean charles childhood. manson immediately comes to mind hitler. jeffrey dahmer comes to mind hitler yeah um albert fish i think yeah. was whipped and shit at an orphanage yeah at the orphanage yeah jane toppin was at a uh, place for girls mm-hmm. she became she killed the elderly as a nurse yep yeah treat them right y'all yeah for the future of people you'll have less uh crazy serial murderers no so four years old the family moves to detroit where his mother marries a man named william collins and this is where i guess this would switch over to john norman collins uh he was an incredibly violent abusive drunk just like the last guy Now, this is where uh, Collins's path sort of diverts from some of the other people of his predilections that we've discussed on this program before, is that he seemed to have no issues in adapting to, uh, say, life in school and, you know, connecting with his peers. He was incredibly social. Uh, 
before he graduated, he was an honor student. He didn't suffer academically. Um, typically, a lot of these serial guys are are kind of flunkies. He was a, like a super athlete, wasn't he? Or like athletic? Yeah. He was the captain of the football team. That's not like simple. You got to be like super good. I play quarterback and free safety. And I kick field goals. So f- suck it. Yeah, usually, I mean, you're Captain. talking about Jeffrey Dahmer. At this point in his life, he was already like a drunk failure. <laughs> Drinking in class. This is gin, straight gin. Yeah. Sixth grade. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what Jeffrey Dahmer was doing. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes they keep slipping through the cracks, but like a lot of times they're already fucking off the rails. This guy's the captain of the football team and an honor student. Star pitcher for oh. the baseball team. Freaking one of the top lacrosse players of his day and he was getting like he was getting action too he was dating all the time he's like oh i want to murder you so bad i has got this feeling inside mm. uh i will say though that the girls later who were interviewed who did date john at the time mm-hmm. do recall him even then being very sexually aggressive so there is some seeds of his bullshit already it's just the mask of sanity is on real good, you you're, know? You're talking about this guy being, you know, football captain and all this. What goes with that is like king shit of the school, Mr. Popular mm-hmm. would would, ta- would be attached to that. Um, so uh, before we did this taping, I freaking uh, watched uh, interviews of him on this show called Kelly and Company. It's a Michigan show mm-hmm. on YouTube. And... Uh, the, when they're talking to him, he's so like, um, uh, where it, convincing that oh, after I was arrested, did the murder stop? No, they kept going. Like he's all acting like he's totally like framed. Like, did he really do it? Like, yeah, you guys should check that video out. It's like an hour long. You see some eighties yeah. local television. I will say though, he is convincing. <laughs> there is almost no doubt of his actual guilt. He definitely did this shit. Did he? Yeah. I'm so glad to hear you say that because I was like, oh, is there going to be like a Netflix program about this guy? No. <laughs> yeah. Here's- he is like super convinced that he didn't do it, but almost nobody else is. Oh, he's like, if I can only get out, I'm going to kill everybody. <laughs> yeah. He's, I think <laughs> this will be that's my, what's going on there. His last final goal is to actually get out. But I think he's used up all of his appeals. He's not coming out. You can hitchhike in Washtenaw County freely now. You can get on strangers' motorcycles now with confidence. Foreshadow. <laughs> uh, that's interesting that you mentioned that because one of the other thing that the girls he dated around that time would recall about this dude is that he was also always pissed. He could never cool out. He was always angry. Uh oh. Yeah. I'm not known as Mr. Jolly in public. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, but this is his thing is the opposite of us. I'm going to cut that. Oh. Yeah, that's the bummer. That's a bummer thing. I was just going to say because we're angry out there, but when we're at home and like in our private spaces, everything's kosher. Him, when he's out playing football and baseball and all that kind of shit, he is fine. But when he, as soon as he has a private moment or in his most intimate relationship, he's angry. That's the opposite of us. Uh, I don't want to put that because in public, I seem jolly. But inside, I'm angry. <laughs> uh, That's for- fine. I could use the smoke break anyway. Yeah. We are cruising. Um, I think this one's pretty funny, pretty zippy. Um, always angry before always angry. I gotta, in case I forget. Okay, so he was known as Mister, or he was known as being always being angry. You want to take from there? <clears throat> One more. We got the scratchiness back. Too much syrup coating. Yeah. (sighs) 
1965, John Norman Collins graduates from high school. Uh, an extremely pissed guy who's sort of, in retrospect, I guess, has a very, very tentative hold on himself. Go on. He's been um, um, boiling over in this anger. Because but he's yeah. got it under control. Yeah, he's not in any trouble with the law. Yeah, there's no reports of him, you know, being anything other than overly aggressive, which in, I mean, the late 50s, early 60s, I'm sorry, ladies. He's known as a hard ass. Yeah, he would have just been like a little pushy. Nobody would have thought twice about you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. boys will be boys kind of bullshit. Have you seen this boy's life with De Niro and DiCaprio? Where De Niro's a stepdad? No, Dwight. I've never Dwight. seen that. Oh, guys, see, everyone that here is listening to this that has seen that movie remembers Dwight and his flat top haircuts. De Niro. Oh, DiCaprio's like 13. He moves into DiCaprio's life. It's just, like, it's just like this. He's a dick. You will fucking hate Dwight. Oh, I, I'm really lucky. My parents. You're always bragging about that. My parents gotta, never divorced. I, have, I got. To, we should cut that out. <laughs> what? I don't want to talk about that. Really? Yeah. Your parents didn't divorce. You just want to vape. Vape, vape, vape. That same year, 1965, he enrolls. And Ypsilanti's Eastern Michigan University. Go Eagles. I just made that up on the spot. That is not a song. Oh. I took pieces from other songs. Remember how I usually get it wrong? Like it'll be U of M, but I'll do Notre Dame. Yeah. I'll do USC. I'll, I'll do like Iowa for USC on accident. I think somebody I'll do St. Else, Mary's. I think, I think my old man will be disappointed in me. He's, he's an alumnus. Go Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> my mom too. Uh, while he was there, he also joined the Theta Chi fraternity. I'm not familiar with that particular fraternity, but I've spent a fair bit of time in that a neighborhood in Ypsilanti. That fraternity is famous, uh, famously known t- for rape and mutilation and killing of women. <laughs> now it is. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, no, well, not really. He got kicked out of there. Yeah. Too. He was too much for them. Yeah. He was too much for the frat boys. Uh, ah, can't be cutting off thumbs, bro. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm warming was, you guys it up. It's pretty haunting. I'm warming for, up the listener. Yeah. When I read through the details of this case, and it would be like the body was found, and I'm like, I've been there eight billion times. Oh, you know what I yeah. mean? Like I've driven by where that body was found, like three days a week for two years. You're like I've unreal. I put, put my kayak in the water right there. Yeah, what the hell? Yes, it's the yeah. Upper Huron. Like, yeah, there's what? not because the thing is, is I can't really. I mean, I'm way closer to Detroit than I am there. Yeah, culturally, even I guess you'd say, but like, I can't think of a Detroit serial killer. I uh, maybe somebody out there can tip me to one, or you know, hit me to one if I'm not aware of it. But I'm at least nothing like this. So it's like, this is the first time I've ever really thought about this. Alice Cooper count? I don't think he's ever killed anybody. Ever seen his stage show? (laughs) Think again, bro. There's a guillotine on stage. (laughs) Oh, definitely. Yeah, Alice Cooper. Fucking isn't he from like Ann Arbor? Is he? Detroitish. Is he? No. We got to do a guillotine episode soon. The history of. We could. Yeah, I'd enjoy that. So, so freshman year for John Collins is is going pretty well, but sophomore year things start to decline very sharply. Uh, his grades fall dramatically. He's no longer an honor honor roll student. That ain't happening anymore. Um, he started committing lots of petty thefts <laughs> for for no real reason, mostly just for fun, like for like stealing for like the thrill of it. Yep. 
You ever get into that? No, I'm way too risk averse. Me neither. <laughs> oh boy, um, I've, I've been picked up by my parents at many stores. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Maiden, yeah, we have your son here. You need to come over here, pick him up here. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> no, that was that was not one of this, my particular vices. This is what my mom would say when I get in trouble for stealing. If you want something so bad enough, just ask for it and we'll buy it for it. I'm like, yeah, bullshit. <laughs> yes. I fucking ask for shit and I never get it. My birthday and Christmas and maybe Easter. Don't tell me that. I'm stealing. It's a stealing. It's a thief's life. <laughs> oh, man. Whew. Well, if you're stealing from businesses. That's one thing. But if you're stealing from the people you live with, that's something that those people tend to really don't enjoy very much. And that's what gets him kicked out of the fraternity. (laughs) So it's not even that his behavior was a little much for the frat boys. It was just that he would continually steal from them. Talking virginities or? I don't think so. Like material items? Yeah. Roger that. That wouldn't be pleasant. That would bother me quite a lot. So during this year to his sophomore year, things are collapsing for him, and this is where his violence sort of kicks up a notch. He then this is weird. Um, there's some implications here. I will unpack it, but let's get to it. Uh, he walked in on his sister having sex. His sister at the time was also already pregnant. How old do you know? No, but she was his younger sister. Or I think maybe. I, I don't even. Okay, it sister's wasn't clear. pregnant. Yeah, his sister's pregnant. Um, He walks in on her having sex. He beat the man unconscious. That's what he does. He's aggressive. You and all know that. He beat his own pregnant sister so badly that she was hospitalized. This. How pregnant? This, who, who is the? Is this a Jamie Cersei situation? Is what I'm thinking. Is she pregnant with his? Because why would you insinuate that? What if that poor girl's alive today? Going, <gasps> we were not having sex. How dare you? I'd love to have an interview with you if you're a listener of this program. Hit us up on Twitter. DM me. We'll set it up. Um, Was there a mention of sisters before? I thought he had a brother. Why would he react that way? Because he's known to be aggressive and he's getting increasingly and more increasingly aggressive. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't, why wouldn't he There's, just go like, oh, okay. I'm sorry, and shut the door? He He's entering, he's crossing the line now. He's entering, like, when OJ fucking stormed in and, like, lost it, and he before OJ killed those people, he would lose it up until that point a lot. He was known to fucking go off well, I'm, in rage. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying I don't understand the passion. motivation and unless... O- and OJ was passion. Yeah. So you're that's saying a, this is passion. Uh, that's exactly what I'm passion. saying. I'm saying your insinuations. You really want to get this sister what? on the phone. Call in. The number's on the phone. <laughs> I'm saying bare minimum, he doesn't react like that unless there's something ro- romantic or sexual going on with her. Whatever. Let's move on. I don't know. I mean, how much? How far? I think it's a stretch to say it might also be his baby. Dude, I, this is a all freaking, I'm saying is I think that's in the cards. Uh, that's a that's a, a trademark Brad the Impaler dinner and hell assumptions. Assumptions, c- presumptions. <laughs> yes, assumptions, but, presumptions. That's what do, I'm saying. That's all me. I, not, everything else in here, I could give you a citation for, but that one, I will admit, that is my inference. If we call it dinner and hell assumption presumptions, we and we feel make one drop that says that that we don't have to make two drops for presumptions or assumptions it covers both it does it's in the budget Mm -hmm. all right it's time to get into it can't put it off any further it's the michigan murders it's gonna get messy 
the first in a string of these obviously related murders committed by John Collins was that of Mary Therese Flazar. She was an accounting student at Eastern Michigan University. She was last seen on July 9th, 1967, walking towards her apartment. Um, a neighbor observed twice a blue-gray Chevrolet stalking her. Like, pulling up and following her, walking. The saber? Yeah. That's Buick. Uh, twice. Uh, <laughs> Chevrolet. Some, some type of blue-gray Chevrolet. So twice this car pulled up and started trying to talk to her, and two times... Uh, Mary shook her head no and walked away from the car. She's like, I don't ride in Chevy Cavaliers, <laughs> no matter if they're wagon or sedan. <laughs> Did they have those then? My joke, they do. <laughs> um, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, so that was the last time she was ever seen alive, was that neighbor observing those two interactions with her. A little while later, next month, August 7th, two 15-year-old boys found Mary's badly decomposed nude body in a field in Superior Township, which is just a little bit outside of town. Probably by a jogger? Uh, I don't know what the two boys were doing, but they, oh, they were walking oh, through a field and they found her. You don't her. think they were jogging? No. Um, That's why a lot of people don't jog. <laughs> Well, I, I watched a lot of Law and Order SVU, and I know if you go jogging, you either get murdered or find a dead body. Yeah, David. I think David tells us that. Yeah, it's like it's how every single episode of the show basically starts. Yeah, it's jogging in the park, the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Why are these birds all over the place? <laughs> Fucking crabs are eating the body. That's Jaws, baby. Opening a Jaws. What a quality film. Ah, we can't start talking about Jaws. Well, this thing will go way off the rails. So this nude, badly decomposed body, let's get back to that. <laughs> Please. Um, Mary Flazar had been stabbed 30 times. Because twice chest. is too many. Yeah. <laughs> twice isn't enough, right? 30, 30 times. That sh That is indicative of an extreme amount of anger. And hatred, like that level of overkill. Yeah. Fucking crazy. Uh, her feet had been severed above the ankle, took the feet off. The thumb and sections of the fingers on one hand were missing. That's like a hatchet job, right? Like. Could, could have been. Ugh. Where would this take place? Oh, we're going to speculate on that furthermore. Mm -hmm. uh, this is murder one, right? This is the first one? Yes. This is his first one and he's doing all this? That we know of. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, he's one of the ones who never admits to it. So it's not like he's given descriptions of this or saying like, oh, actually, I did four before this in this town. Yeah. He denies everything. Yeah. Uh, on the hand that had not been mutilated, it was removed at the forearm altogether. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, she had also been extremely savagely beaten. So she was beaten unconscious, and then he probably stabbed her because he wouldn't want her to be screaming. So I would think Maybe, she was yeah. beaten unconscious. That makes then. sense. And then just take out all his rage with the stabbing. Was this body, did you say, left near water? It was found in a field. Oh, okay. Um, police also believe that she had been raped, but the body was DC, so decomposed that they had no way to prove that. Like traces of? Yeah, and okay. they also don't have any way to prove whether that occurred pre- or post-mortem. I'm going... I'm hoping pre. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I'm not hoping anything. So would that even make it on you? I might think that's even worse. Oh, man. If we were to um, run like a batch of clips of us saying shit out of context, that would be a prime one. Like, oh, there's, 
they're not sure if she was raped pre or post motive. And I go, I'm hoping pre. Yeah. Like cut, cut. just cut that. Just that snip <laughs> like, right there. Oh, we'd have to listen to every episode and pull every. Or some of the episode. stuff that we said in character. Yeah. <laughs> or like when in, there's in the Hitler episode, you say something like, I'd kill a baby. <laughs> yeah. If it was Hitler. <laughs> yeah. And like just cut it at, I'd, I'd kill, kill a baby. A baby. Yeah. yeah. And here's what Impaler thinks about babies. I kill a baby. <laughs> yeah, <and> snip. <laughs> That's the dinner in hell. <laughs> blah blah blah. Mutilated rape. Oh yep. Uh, evidence also shows that the body had been moved by the killer on three separate occasions. Like he did in three different spots. I'm gonna beat her ass here. I'm gonna stab her in the back thirty times here, and I'm gonna chop all her shit off here. No, it all went down. And then things got shifted around three different times. So, uh, once to unhide her body from where she was buried under a bunch of bottles and cans, that's where she was originally hidden right after the murder. They found traces of blood, DNA, and shit. Someone mm-hmm. discovered it. Yeah. Uh, Several days later, they know, investigators know based on like the decomposition and like how the scene looked that she was moved again three feet over. So there's the initial hiding, then it's unhidden, then it's moved another three feet over. That means that this guy keeps coming back to the crime scene over and over again to visit the body. Of the person that he murdered. That's fucked up. It's fucking weird. And that's it's, that's why they're not sure if it was pre or post. Ooh. Because the people who come back often do post. Yeah, but if it was post, he'd probably leave a trace behind. Unless he's wearing prevention. This is 1967. They don't know what the hell DNA is. Oh, it ain't yeah. a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well... Not he does other he visits other corpses later mm-hmm. so he's a visitor yeah another weird thing is that collins showed up at the funeral home before mary's funeral oh yeah this is it visiting yeah. the corpse yeah he said he was a family member and he just wanted to get a picture of the corpse for like a family member who couldn't make it to like remember her by and the people are like what in the world are you talking about this is like a decomposed this is not like a funeral prepared body no one can see this it's a closed casket scenario definitely and a family member would want to see this exactly don't know yeah And he's like, no, I'll just take a quick picture and everything will be fine. And then when finally they were like, listen, it's not going to happen. They said he just like all the emotion washed out of his face and he went just like completely dead eyed and he just turned around and walked straight out the door. And they lived. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) They weren't found later. Nope. Or aren't missing now. Yeah. Not as far as I know. I mean, he went after young women he wasn't going after old people i mean a direct quote from here him here is you mean you can't fix her up so enough so i could just get one picture of her throw a little paint throw a little makeup on her splash a little makeup we're good yeah interesting enough this guy after he turned around completely deadpanned and walked out of the place got into a blue gray chevrolet and trouble when you said deadpan, I just pictured like um, him doing like one liners, really deadpan. <laughs> I gave some spot remover to my dog and he disappeared. My grandfather passed away when he was a little boy. What was that guy's name? Steve. I can't remember, but I know I'm know yeah. familiar <laughs> yeah. with the style. Yeah. Steve Wright. Steven Wright. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went by a pizzeria and they were selling pizzas by the slice. I saw a guy throwing triangles in the air. <laughs> yes, okay, so isn't that fucked up? He hops into that blue gray Chevy and takes deadpan, off. yeah, yeah, in a deadpan manner, yeah, completely lacking any sort of emotion. 
I use the word appropriately. Feels like you're accusing me over there. No, I'm just judging. I'm trying to stop. I can see your silent disapproval. No, no, no. I'm. I was trying to like resist <laughs> prolonging the sidetrack. <laughs> <laughs> I had more to say, but I'm trying to shut up. The audience sees what's going on. You can't. Yeah. You can't hide it from them. Yeah, but they don't get microphones. <laughs> Well, so let's go to July 5th, 1968. So we're talking almost a year gap after that first one. Still almost a quarter quarter barrel of beer left in the keg from the party. <laughs> July 11 5th. 11 months. July 5th. 4th of July. Oh, yeah. Next day. They had a big bash. It's crazy. Should have been there. Freaking fireworks, illegal fireworks and everything. It's awesome. From Ohio. Shit. Well, this uh, July 5th was a much less uh don't you fun dare bring affair. down my don't you dare bring down my July 5th okay well the decomposed mutilated body of 20 year old art student Joan Elspeth Shell was found on the side of the road in Ann Arbor goddamn artist you son of a bitch at least the accountant was like taking out of her misery <laughs> like you don't want to do this shit <laughs> you don't want to do the accounting shit but goddamn artist now he's got my attention. Well, she had been raped, then <laughs> stabbed 25 times. Oh, God. Um, these wounds had punctured her lungs, damaged her liver, severed the carotid artery, and punctured the skull. I'll take that carotid artery separation any day. Yeah. If I'm getting murdered. Yeah, Please that'll, do. That'll probably, if it's any consolation, hopefully it was quick. Uh. And we can be sure of that because after that, her throat had been slashed. Okay. I'm, is this the, are you reading this to me in the order in, in which they took place? Cause I'm thinking, cause of, of further notes, he tries to keep him from screaming in the future of these notes. I've seen him. Well, the carotid artery I'm sure was from the throat wound. Okay. So yeah. I'm thinking he slices the throat and then he does his mutilation. Yeah. He doesn't want to hear him. He doesn't want to hear him. And if he's slashing their throat because he doesn't want him to scream, that lends a little bit more evidence to the post-mortem theory for the sexual assault. If they took place before the f- bloody violence, yes. I think they may have taken place after the violence. Like knock them out, sexual assault, then slice I think throat. it might be slice throat and then stab, 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 and stab, then- stab, stab. And has sex with a stabbed sex body with a corpse. Yeah, <laughs> he or he might do it before and then come back the next day and do it again. He never talked, so we don't know for sure. But it's everything's on the table here. This is a really bad dude, Ipsy Ripper. Yeah, uh, she was also found with her mini skirt tied around her neck which I thought was strange because that was done definitely after she was dead. You don't tie a mini skirt around someone's neck and then try to slash through it. That meant that was done after everything. You probably try to cover it up so you had to look at it. But then again, he stabbed her. So you like to see flesh opened up. Yeah. Now, Shell was last seen by her roommate, Susan Cole, at a bus stop on the evening of June 30th. All investigative lines of inquiry into the murder of Joan Shell failed. They had no leads, although they were able to basically immediately link these two murders, um, Fleshar's murder and Shell's murder together, saying that they had been committed by the same person. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of times you see serial killers get away with what they're doing at first because they attack like indigent populations, like um, prostitutes. Yeah, it's like street walkers. Yeah, street sex oh. workers that they try to be transient. They come in, go. Yeah, people don't necessarily pay attention to them because they're the less dead. Yeah, uh, people don't value them like they should because they're human beings they don't even investigate it when they die because nobody's clamoring for it makes me think of that case where the um where the men 
paid the homeless men to be a hunting guide for them and they went over deep into the woods and then it turns out that the homeless hunting guide that they paid to be there they had no idea gonna hunt who him. they were fucking with though. they were gonna hunt him he didn't he finds out that night after eating like steak dinner beard cigars mm-hmm. tomorrow he's the hunted and i just it just brings reminds me of that story they didn't know that it's the most dangerous game though right they'd bitten off more than they could chew cigars played a key role put them on trees or so i don't know anyway so <laughs> yeah normally they get they don't get caught because they're doing it on people that aren't like looked after looked after yeah but these this guy's talking about university of michigan and eastern michigan university students college students college students are like the most dead if sex workers are the least dead prostitute or uh college students are like the most dead everybody's gonna pay attention when college students are getting killed yeah yeah so they link the two crimes right away which was good but this isn't where it stops unfortunately uh two months later on the other hand some more information comes into the investigation uh there were two eyewitnesses that stated that they had seen Shell walking with John Norman Collins. Uh, you know where he lived, too? Right across the street from Shell. Wow. Yeah. It's been what a coinky dink. Been yeah, eyeballing exactly. What, what do we do, sir? Who, who, we covet. We, what we see, we covet. What, what does that mean, sir? What's that, is that an anagram? Um, when questioned about it, Collins flatly denied even knowing her. No, I didn't. I don't know. I don't know her across never, the street. Never seen her before. You never seen this picture of this woman, sir? Yeah. So have you ever seen your neighbors across the street? No. I never, I, I've never looked out a window in my life. Sir, we have a picture of you with her at their barbecue. I'm going inside. Bye. <laughs> I and, got a temper, you know. Yeah, that was basically it. And at that time, the police did not seek to verify the alibi he gave them. They just were like, okay, sure. Let's go. I'm sick of being nah, out he here. No, he said he didn't do it. I hate driving on dirt roads. Now we got to wash the car. The yeah. washed in our officer. Washed in our. <laughs> that's that washed, like washed in, our, in our accent. That's that freaking wall. That's that Whitmore Lake accent. <laughs> From Dexter. I don't know. Is Dexter Washington uh, with Chelsea? Uh, <laughs> Chelsea. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Or is Dexter. it Livingston? Yeah, Dexter's by Chelsea, right? Where's Livingston County? There's like alpacas out there and shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's got to still be Washington out there. It yeah. might be Livingston, though. Okay. Uh, Livingston Ripper coming up next. Livingston County Ripper. We'll create so, one. Fast forward a little bit. We're on March 20th. 1969. 23-year-old law student Jane Louise Mixer disappeared after posting a note on a bulletin board seeking a ride to Muskegon back home. You're That's talking... On, uh, if you look at your left hand with the back of it up, it's over around by uh, the very Muskegon? edge of the bottom of your left pinky finger. Yeah, yeah like first knuckle of your, where your pinky yeah. meets your hand. Uh huh. So let me just get this straight. July 1969. Are you saying kind of ballpark it's the summer of 69? Yes. This is the summer of 69 this is, is what you're summer saying. summer of 1969. This is the summer of 69 is 69. what you're saying. 69. Yeah. It's the summer of 69. Oh. That's the song, right? Brian yeah. Adams. Let's make it sure. Does that sound like him? I think it, that song is actually about the Michigan murders. Yeah. Bought my first real stabbing knife. Six string, like wire to strangle with. Yeah, exactly. It's a, That's how they measure length of knives in Michigan. In the video? Six string knife. It's a good stabbing one. In the video, Brian Adams buys a guitar from a pawn shop. He goes home. He takes the fucking strings off the guitar, throws the guitar away, and strangles someone with the three <laughs> guitar strings. That's yeah, that's, the, that's crazy. A lot of people don't remember their it's original deep. version of that before the up upcry against it. Before he's dropped from his label. Yeah. Yeah. This is deep. This is a deep video. A lot of symbolism. 
So she was found later covered with her own raincoat laid next to her copy of Catch-22 in Denton Cemetery in Van Buren Township. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. It's by Belleville. She was shot twice in the head and garroted with a nylon stocking that was not hers. So this stocking he had had separate. Now he's got a fanny pack full of fucking murder shit. Yeah, I've I got mini skirts. I cut it up into straps. I got a nylon. I got a knife. It's my bat belt for killing. What an asshole. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jane Louise Mixer was not sexually assaulted. However, she was found under the raincoat with her tights rolled all the way down to reveal like a pad Maxi because pad. she was menstruating. Yeah. It's like, see, I ain't a total monster. Well, wait, wait, wait till later. Think I'm sick. No, I I'm just saying mo- there's information that I know that maybe you are not remembering right now. That's going to change <sighs> that statement. Um, So four days later, four days after the discovery of Mixer's body on March 25th, a surveyor discovered the body of a teenage girl behind a vacant house a few hundred yards from where the body of Joan Shell had been discovered. So now it's starting to ramp up like into the berserker period where they can't control themselves at all anymore. And he's going after his youngest that we know of on record. Mm Mm-hmm. You said he, usually people start with homeless people, street people. How do we know he didn't? But then again, it didn't seem like he traveled far from Washington. It seemed like he kept close knit because mm-hmm. Detroit's like freaking good 40 miles from freaking Washington County. Yeah. And it's not like he's making, putting miles on for these killings. No, it's they're right. They're right in his backyard. Uh, there were n- numerous skull fractures. Uh, her killer had jammed a piece of her own shirt down her throat to muffle her screams as she was beaten. Right. Her wounds included deep cuts believed to have been done with a leather strap. Right. Tip, please tip softly. Tip toe. Okay, this I was next wondering one. what the. Uh, I'm just. I really don't want to let someone to turn us off. Uh, like I'm fuck this. Yeah, um, <laughs> I can't take no more. I'm never listening again. Uh, welt marks on her body uh, were indicative of having been restrained. Yeah. And Collins had torn a branch from a nearby br- uh, tree to sexually assault the victim with. God damn it. Show over. Goodbye. It's been thank you dinner and hell band. Yeah, that was a rough one. Um, and this was sixteen-year-old high school student Marilyn Skelton. What a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. What? Not her, right? Hell no. Yeah, this guy. Uh, Poor thing. I don't know why that came off to me like that, but I was like, <gasps> yeah, I'm not. Th- you know, I mean, I am getting a little. This show is wearing on me. Yeah, a little but, bit. But uh, I'm not like that. Jesus Christ, Brad. Yeah, 16-year-old, I can imagine that. Yeah, I can see the reasoning. Yeah. Like, <laughs> come on, dude. I was just saying, there that's you go. why I had that reaction. We should just, I'm going to just out of context th- this whole, I'm going to have the team put together, <laughs> like maybe for the end of the show. Just oh, this episode. There's probably a couple good quips. <laughs> just this episode. Yeah, she had been hitchhiking in Ann Arbor, which, I mean, could you imagine a time? I would never even consider it hitchhiking, like sticking my thumb out to see if somebody would pick me up. I would never even consider it. It's been something that's like never done for my entire life. A time when that was regularly done is almost like mind blowing to me. I've hitchhiked. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I never have. Uh, I was in Spain. Mm -hmm. I think I might have told this story real quick. My wife and I current wife we were at a concert and the last train home to our hotel was at 10 p.m but the show was going on to like 4 a.m it's crazy oh so we're like fuck it i guess we're just i don't know we ended up going with some people like when would the first train have been 10 
oh like 10 a.m or something like we were just gonna, oh, like, sleep. We were just gonna like sleep outside or stay like, up all night sit in the train station conk out <laughs> no hable but yeah uh, these, go get breakfast maybe they got a breakfast like no cab would drive us we had money but they wouldn't do it it's too far oh. and, uh, so yeah we like got in a car with these people my wife i fell asleep my wife's pulling her hair out like i'm leaving dna all over this bitch like for missing <laughs> hitchhiking yeah oh, i've hitchhiked another time with another woman we spun out in the middle of the freeway that was no in shit. the winter it was in washington county <gasps> in the 90s and uh we were walking down the freeway and like eh, eh, truck pulled over and gave us a ride didn't kill us so good on you watching uh like how you're getting your clearing up your rep i like when you're driving and there's signs or it's like you're in a the, right by a prison don't yeah. pick up any hitchhikers <laughs> Yeah, Jackson. There's one in UP, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, a garter belt had been tied around Marilyn Skelton's neck, and she had been left with her clothes stacked up like neatly next to her. So now there's beginning to be like a weird ritual around how he's doing this shit too. Um. This was also immediately linked to the other murders. I mean, all savagely beaten, all knife wounds to the neck, all had clothing tied around the neck, and each woman had been menstruating at the time of her death. All of them? All of them. How would how could that be? I don't know. How, I, mm, what for what, real? Yes. What I thought is I bet you if somebody went back and looked at cases from around then, or maybe ones that weren't even reported, I bet you there was a lot of women that he raped but did not murder. So you think they're, he killed the ones that were on their period I and think let the maybe. ones that weren't go? I think maybe. But do you think a person that could sink blades into human flesh, you think they'd have a problem putting their penis in a woman's vagina during menstruation? These people all have some kind of fucked up, crazy thing about their childhood. That they're that's what's tied into their sexuality, and it's violent and it's bizarre. We can't wrap our heads around it because we're not psychopaths. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like That's the only... Because, like, what is he doing following him around beforehand and making sure? Like, why... Like, it would be... A, it could be a coincidence, I suppose. We're only talking about three people. Or is it four now? What? Is it four or three we've, we've got to so far? Deaths? Yeah. Probably four. I yeah. thought the teen... I, I thought mean, the young girl was... it could be a was, coincidence. I thought the young girl was the, was the um, final. <laughs> I didn't realize... Yeah, I got it mixed up. Oh, did you think that this was the young girl? I thought you wrapped it with the girl with the branch. You think the 16-year-old Mary Ann Skelton was the I, young one? I thought there was a 13-year-old one. There is. She's oh. next. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I knew there was. Whew. Was... Yeah, so the next month, April, on April 16th, 13-year-old school, school girl Don Louise Bassom was found in Ypsilanti clothed only in a white blouse and bra which had been pushed up around her neck she had been repeatedly stabbed in the chest and genitals multiple that's the one i wanted you to tiptoe god damn it strangled to death with an electrical cord with a handkerchief stuffed in her mouth both items from his bat belt but first that's the one i wanted you to gingerly go with was the 13 year olds privates being I'm just getting the information across. I was trying to just get through that part quickly. I just wanted to power through. So me bringing it up only (laughs) dwelled on it more? I think so. I'm sorry, listeners. Dinner in hell Twitter poll. Should we have spent more or less time discussing the (laughs) genital stabbing? Let us know on Twitter. Uh, We are not making light of this. We just don't want you to be sad. We just need you to have all the facts. That's what fucking happened. In a fucked up. exciting, high-energy way. Yes. Now, she had last been seen alive at 7.30 the previous evening walking home from a friend's house. That is terrifying. One week after the murder, 
a detective searching the area found a, a cloth, a, a scrap of cloth from her blouse, along with an earring belonging to Marilyn Skelton. That's another piece of evidence that he kept coming back to the crime scenes over and over again and carrying multiple pieces of evidence with him around. The murder fanny pack. It's the murder belt, fanny pack. A utility belt, as you so ingeniously. You might even see Dinner and Hell murder fanny pack for sale one day. People are always coming to us with merch ideas. Freaking Schitzel was a big hit over in the, in the uh, Scandinavian region of our listeners. Oh, that's Base. where it'll get the most use. A lot of people ordered that. Limited edition. Schitzel. Go to the Facebook page and see it. Woo. Fast forward another two months to June 9th. The nude body of a young woman in a field was found with multiple slash and stab wounds, a gunshot wound to the forehead, um, same knife wounds to the neck. Here we go. The right thumb was gone, and it was because it was a defensive wound. She had put her hand up to protect herself, and she had gotten shot right in the head through her thumb. RoboCop. It does remind me of RoboCop. Clarence Boddicker, bitches leave. Uh, she had also been sexually assaulted like the others. And you want to get into uh, detail? Or? Well, again, the pathologist <laughs> was unable to claim whether this had happened pre or post mortem. He was a shit pathologist. Let's face it. Let's be honest. Let's call it, say what it is. Call it like it is. Well, this woman was 21-year-old University of Michigan student Alice Elizabeth Calum. Last seen at a friend's party. Now, it's not like these weren't being investigated. They were. They were. By July 1969, more than 1,000 known sex offenders had been eliminated as suspects and several thousand individuals had been interviewed about this case so it's like they had a task force going they were trying they weren't getting anywhere because physical science was garbage and they already talked to him and let him go once yet they never backtracked and went back to was it shell's neighbor across the street yeah they never went back to him yet now, at the request of the community, at this point, a Dutch psychic named Peter Hurkos traveled to Washington, Washtenaw County to generate a psychic profile of the murderer. The profile generated by Hurkos accru- accurately predicted that the murder was a strongly built white male under 25 who rode a motorcycle. He led investigators right to the site of body discoveries And accurately predicted the killer would strike one more time. Oh, boy. So what I'm saying is, if it wasn't Collins, it was was Herkos. Right? (laughs) Yeah. Dude, think we think alike. Herkos is like, I got to get this shit done. I only got an alibi from three to four. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Going back to the Netherlands. Well, that's actually probably a pretty good alibi. He was in the Netherlands. Oh. I thought he was in Washtenaw County. You can't stab somebody in Ypsilanti from the Netherlands. I thought he visited That's Washtenaw impossible. County. Impossible. I thought you said they brought him to Washtenaw County. Yeah, but that was after this, where they were dead. By oh, the stabbing. They, they were all, all the stabbing. Gotcha. All the stabbing at this point had already taken place. Yeah. So he got a lot of shit right, though. Uh, especially that he would strike one more time, and this would be Karen Sue Bynaman. She was last seen alive on July 23rd, 1969, reported missing by her roommate when she failed to return to her dormitory by curfew. Evidently, that was not something she did. It it was a great big world. (laughs) American Girl Tom Petty playing. Yeah. In the car. That's a murder song, for sure. Yeah, that song comes on, turn it. If you're alone at night and you're female and your cat's waiting for you in the window. Especially if you tap the steering wheel and sing along, you're done. If you ever see a man trying to put a couch in the back of a van, just move on. Yeah, Let don't that help. man be. This cast is fake. 
Well, three days later, her nude body was discovered badly beaten with some cuts exposing subcutaneous tissue. So, extremely high level of violence and rage in this one. Uh, She had received extensive skull and brain injuries, was also forced to ingest a caustic substance, like an acid. Um, Her neck, shoulders, and breast had been burned with that same caustic agent. And she had also been sexually assaulted. So she's burning and being eaten from the inside down her esophagus. Yeah. Wow, this is all going on too. She's internally in pain as well as exteriorly, externally. Mm -hmm. Now, since this task force was put together and they knew that Collins liked to return to the scene of the crime to visit the body, this time the police replaced her body with a mannequin and they had the sound the surrounding area completely surrounded by officers. So they found the body. They don't tell anybody they found it. They take the body away, replace it with a mannequin, and stake it out, basically. 2 a.m. the next morning, one officer saw a man running from the gully where it was. But it was raining really hard, and it fucked up his radio. So he couldn't radio anybody. So he got away. They had him. He slipped away. Fuck. I'm just picturing this whole thing. I ain't getting out of the car. You getting out of the car? Fuck that. He's probably just jogging. My radio's crapping out. Yeah, I'm going back to sleep. You pass me a French cooler. <laughs> That's your second one. I only got one. God damn it. I can have as many as I want. Boston cream, you sound like my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Lay off. Well, this is where he finally made the mistakes, though. He slipped up as he put Bynaman on the back of his bike outside of a wig shop. The owner of that wig shop and the an employee at the business next door both remembered exactly what had happened to her. They were like, yeah. A dude got her on the back of his bike like this and took off. And they described him. They were both able to describe him very accurately. One of the police, uh, unfortunately for John Collins and his wish to remain anonymous, was a former fraternity brother of his before Collins had gotten kicked out. So he put two and two together, and when he ran the description... And realized that he had been interviewed before because he lived right across the street from Shell. That's when uh, they looked into it. And wouldn't you know, he's got the same kind of bike that they described to. So after they recalled this, they arrested him. He had a long, I mean, vaguely weird but boring trial in which he maintains his innocence and they duke it out over this and that aspects of it. Uh, He's eventually found guilty. It was close. This isn't one of the ones where the jury came back in like a couple hours. It took them three days, 27 hours of deliberation. But they did return a unanimous verdict of guilty. I think the reason they deliberated so long is just because it was a long trial with a shitload of information. Yeah, a bunch of cases. Yeah. Can you imagine what the jury and the people in the courtroom were subjected to? Like what you just put our listeners through for one solid hour. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They were put through like 27 hours of this shit. Pictures, evidence. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when they investigated Tiny him, hose. there was a lot of witnesses against him, including his aunt and his own aunt and uncle testified against him. Let's go court because they he broke into their house to kill Bynaman. That's where she died, and they found evidence of it there too. And mm. they ra- they were against him. They were like, "Yeah, he fucking did it, and he did it in her house because he's a piece of shit psychopath." Oh. I just remembered we did another Michigan story closer to home than this. I believe we when we did the Valentine's episode, oh, it was yeah. a Michigan guy that killed his wife on Valentine's. Yeah. Boom. Memory. Maiden memory moment. Only an hour later. 
So after this unanimous guilty verdict gets turned in, he is sentenced to life in prison in solitary confinement at Southern Michigan Prison. He was later transferred to Marquette Branch Prison, where he resides today at 70 years old. Not in solitary confinement and not with hard labor, because I think now both of those have been determined unconstitutional. <laughs> That's the nor- up north one I was thinking of, I think. Yeah, up in Marquette. Up there. Up there. Yeah, up, up there in Marquette. Up the, up in the UP. There are UPers up there. Yeah. That's it. That's John Norman Collins, the co-ed killer. Ipsy Ripper, Washtenaw Wrangler, the uh, Van Buren Violence Producer, <laughs> the Huron River Just Piece of Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Just Dash Piece shit of Shit. Ripper. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And that also, thanks for that, Steve, because that was not on our list to do. Yeah. And holy shit, I don't know why this guy's not talked about just like Gacy and the rest of them. I, he's just as bad. Green he's River. fucking living nightmare, yeah. We can do the Green River, right? Yeah, we'll get to him. Green River. Gary a, Ridgeway. I think of Green River. I think of the band. It was members of Pearl Jam wearing Green River first. Mm. And Mother Love Bone. I remember uh, Mother Love we're Bone. grunge, baby. Get that grunt. Yeah, um, that's it. If you've got a request out there. Or a mention. Yeah, anything you want to get in, we'll probably talk about it. Yeah, something from your hometown. Yeah, let us know. The, the world should know about. Yeah, do you have a real fucked up story that we probably didn't hear about? I'd love to hear it. Yeah. I live for it, so lay it on us. Best way to do that is on Twitter, at Dinner and Hell Pod. We're on Stitcher iTunes, Facebook, SoundCloud, Sound Wallet, YouTube, Pod Bonus, Pod Stravaganza, um, uh, Incast, instead of out again, Pod Mart, Pod Famous, Pod Lover, Pod Addict, Pod Pod Tacular, Pod and Get It, Pod Tificate, Pod Challenge. All kinds of it's everywhere. It's crazy. So many, so many tubes, so many pods, so many twits, so many errs. Yeah, so let's hear it. Only one band. That band is incredible. Only one band. They're tearing this place to pieces tonight. Play on. This audience is gonna tear the house down. I gotta get the fuck out of (laughs) here. Thanks for them coming. Thanks for listening at home. Have a good night. Are we going? And here's that out of context bit mentioned on the show. Yeah, these what we are saying here should not be taken for serious. I'll eat its heart to claim its power. Hold on, I have to piss. Grab two ankles and yeah. whip that toddler. Oh, I want to murder you so bad. It's got this feeling inside. <clears throat> That fraternity is famous, uh, famously known t- for rape and mutilation and killing of women. They don't ride in Chevy Cavaliers. Yeah, and they okay. also don't have any way to prove whether that occurred pre or post mortem. I'm hoping pre. I kill a baby. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, it's> in <laughs> step. <laughs>